as you can see at home, um, a, what people are saying, the second or third wave, but there's another wave of COVID and um, physical events are what maybe some happened in the fall. They are now being shut down, especially for the foreseeable future six months. We don't really know. Um, there is hope that the vaccines will um, make physical events uh, maybe in the last half of the year viable. Um, but uh, I wanted to dive in with you guys about what, what is going on out there. What are the solutions? Are people turning to tech? I know I want to start with Jonathan because I know Jonathan, you're really at the forefront of this and maybe you could tell us what you're seeing, what's going on um, out there um, for events. Well, I think uh, this is, it's definitely been in a very interesting last few weeks. Um, at the end of last year, um, I was, I think I was very confident that London Wine Fair would be the first one to be able to actually hold a physical event. Um, and to some extent, the reasons for that have continued to hold. The UK has been making good progress on the vaccinations um, and things are, things are on track, but then the variants popped up. Um, and then all of a sudden the venue where the London Wine Fair would be otherwise held is now shut. Um, and so they really had no choice at the end, but to go completely digital. And they've, I think, done the, uh, done the pivot in, in spades and have set a really innovative, uh, digital show up that, um, uh, I think will will turn a lot of heads um, and okay, I'm a bit biased. We helped with the concept, but um, uh, there was a lot of things that was thrown against the wall in various tastings last year. And uh, some of them didn't work, but there are a number of things that really proved to be effective. Um, and um, of course, I think digital is, is not gonna replace the physical events. And I think a, a, a successful digital event will need to have some uh, some sense of being able to get those wines, order samples, and actually be able to taste the wines that you're talking about. Um, and so I think those events that are that will be doing that will be the ones that people say they're getting value of, um, even if they can't get together and and um, yeah, and uh, schmooze with all the colleagues and and stuff. So I think it's. It's, it's definitely, um, yeah, it's definitely going to be a digital first half of the year. Um, and um, yeah, it's going to be an interesting journey. Has anybody joined a, a digital event? Nick? Also, well, you know, digital tastings, right? Um, where, you know, the producer organized in this case, I think by 67 Pall Mall, um, gets the wines distributed in small bottle bottles under argon gas, very efficient delivery service through UPS, you know, Zoom tasting direct with, you know, the main guys themselves. And I was, you know, shocked at how good the condition of the wine was when it arrived. And um, it was quite nice actually to be able to go to a tasting and sort of, you know, listen to someone, but if you needed to, you know, urgently leave the room and come back a couple of minutes later then you could do that and it and it didn't really matter so I think that's I think that's uh, that's interesting I think it will be interesting as well to see what effect this has on the exhibition world generally so um, many moons ago I worked for a business called Reed Elsevier which is now called Relex which owns the world's largest exhibition company and of course you know when the kind of digital explosion happened um, during the you know the last years of the 90s um, as an information and media as an information and media group they were extremely concerned about what the future of publishing was what the future of exhibitions were and there was there was some discussion around whether um, exhibitions would survive the the digital explosion as it were and clearly they did they proved incredibly resilient the need, the, the desire for um, uh, for sellers and buyers to physically meet and to do business um, uh, in in a in a in an exhibition dynamic was clearly overpowering, and I think it'll be very interesting to see the extent to which these last you know fourteen months or whatever it's going to be will um, 
will will show the resilience of that sector on an ongoing basis or the extent to which digital um, exhibitions will finally um, uh, start to take root and become more significant vis-a-vis -vis their um, you know physical equivalents I, I have no idea what the answer is and and Seb you've been um, you've been working on some tastings or you've been doing some tastings uh, yeah, look, we, we, we work with the, 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 the smaller size of wineries who basically operate and generate the bulk of their sales from a tasting room or a cellar door. Uh, we've been trying to help wineries extensively with organizing uh, some of those tasting, some of those technologies. Um, I think ultimately the key message to really try and get across the industry, whether it's producer or distributor or even restaurants to that extent, um, is really that while there may be a return to some normality, uh, technology is not going to go back. Once a certain class of consumers have discovered the convenience of oh, I don't have to drive two hours to go and pick up some wine. Oh, I can just buy it online now. Oh, I can just join and, and talk online and actually do online tastings. Once consumers have seen that, there's no going back. There's going to be, look, there's going to be a return to wine tourism, visiting the wineries. Uh, but it's also an important um, realization for everyone in the industry that uh, technology is here to stay. Now, the biggest challenge I think that wineries and I'm assuming a, a number of other players are, are facing is really uh, how do we generate a, a, an experience that's just as good online or potentially even better online uh, as opposed to uh, when someone comes and visit. When you have someone in your face, when you're actually interacting with another human being, introducing the wine, talking about the wine, that is an outstanding experience. You've got the backdrop, you've got the vineyard, you've got, uh, I, I keep mentioning the one-legged dog, it's a real dog. Um, I think that experience is really hard to take into a digital uh, kind of a world, kind of a realm, um, but we have been doing a lot, of, uh, a lot of different tests, a lot of different initiatives with wineries on how to run those virtual tasting, uh, how to, uh, instead of just having the winemaker to kind of a, just swirl around and go, oh, yeah, taste this, taste that. Oh, there's a bit of this. Oh, we did that with the wine. Um, there's a number of different approaches uh, that wineries can now take uh, to, you know, bundle with some food pairing. So we've seen wineries working with local cheese producers so that they're now shipping wine with cheese, right? So you get to discover different products at home. Uh, so all of those uh, kind of uh, initiatives, the way that you want to effectively try and create really an outstanding experience uh, online uh, is where a lot of focus needs to be paid. Um, there, there's a lot more that's to be said uh, on the online socialization side of things, right? It's great to drink wine online. It's brilliant to be able to hang up after a wine tasting and we just roll straight into bed. That's kind of cool. But at the same time, there's a social experience that we need to lean on even more, I think. Uh, we did some, some networking driven wine tasting. We've done some corporate uh, kind of a team bonding style uh, wine tasting. Uh, and we've also worked directly with wineries and their existing customer base to help their customers connect together and share the story of what was it when they visited the winery. Uh, and these things are all little little twists that allow really to differentiate a wine tasting from jumping online with a winemaker just talking about the wine to becoming in a social experience, although using technology. Yeah. Laurie, are we, uh, oh, go, go. Sorry. No, no, like I, I wanted like two things that came to mind, like, um, like one of our client at our channel uh, is Dirty and Roddy and they, they, are, they love the world of music. Uh, and they really tapped in, like that's kind of like their, you know, their passion. And they're like, I mean, their Zoom, like they're, they're doing Zoom, like wine tasting, but they always have like a band. So it always has like a mini concert part to it. Uh, and they were telling us their Zoom tasting events where they have to sell like flights. So they have shipped the wine ahead and everything. They're sold out until like April right now. So they sell out their own Zoom event. So it's just like, so I'm actually doing an interview with them uh, at the end of February. So I will know more and we'll be able to report on how they pull this off. What's interesting is they had started the digital like wine tasting before COVID. 
they just became, before they were hybrid and then they just moved to obviously 100%. And apparently they're having like a lot of fun. The audience is obviously having a lot of fun. That's why it's sold out. Um, so that's just something that I wanted to point out. And also as always, I think sometimes like the wine industry is a bit too in the bubble of the wine industry. Uh, I've been amazed, for example, um, so right now I'm drinking uh, this coffee in this cup, uh, handmade in Portugal, but online. Um, and tonight I'm learning how to make gnocchi with one of the chef because I purchased this ceramic and then like, hey, do you want to join us for a Zoom? Here are the ingredients you need. They were sent to me like three days or uh, four days in advance. Register, it's in my calendar. And the chef is in his own kitchen um, because of course his restaurant is closed. It's a way as well to support the local like restaurant. Uh, but you know, he invested in actually like ring light. It's got like a proper, like, so the setting is nice. It's just like very homey and, um, and I'm gonna like, you know, tag along. I'm gonna airplay that on my own TV screen in the living room and follow along. And it's gonna be about like 50 of us. Last time it was like 50, 70 people that purchase plates and bowls from a company that is now learning how to, and even learning how to plate, you know, in the beautiful plate that we bought so that it looks like we're at the restaurant, even though we're at home. And I just thought this kind of experience is no reason why the wine industry can't pull it off. Yeah. Great, great. So I guess the final thought, um, you know, this has created a, a moment for tech. Um, and, and we've sort of touched on this in our conversations tonight. Is tech ready for this? Are we ready to deliver what everybody wants us to, which is an incredible experience at home um, an incredible experience, you know, um, digitally that might even, you know, rival um, something that would happen in the physical world. Jonathan, are you, are, is tech ready for this? Or you mean wine, uh, the wine world? Well, the wine world, or are we ready to deliver for the wine world? I mean, that's a good question. Who's? Who? Well, I mean, I think you, if you, um, even before COVID, if you like look more in the software side of the, the world, you know, digital events were, were already uh, common and being able to get around and, and collaborate. And, um, and the, the thing that makes the wine industry, of course, different is being able to taste the product. Um, uh, that said, if you, I mean, if you look at um, wine to wine and what Stevie Kim had built up uh, in, in Verona the last few years, it is a wine event, a two day wine event, where the only thing that has to do with tasting is actually more drinking. It's not about the wine, it's about digital topics about the wines, there are multiple tracks. And if you have only done wine events, it would seem quite foreign to you. If you've come from outside the industry and you go to other types of conferences, it feels very much at home to what uh, a conference, uh, what other conferences would look like in other industries. And I think um, that is something that um, I, I think events can also bring into, yeah, bring into them as this, this concept of it's, it, tasting is important there's also a lot of other educational topics as well um, and when you go digital you're not just limited to the 40 60 seats in the room your audience can be massive um, and so i think there's i, I think um, you know we've gone through the learning curve last year of of what could work and what doesn't work so well in the wine industry and i think um, i think the industry is poised to to start executing and um, and it's you know other industries are doing it very well. And I think that the wine industry is definitely ready for it. Nick? Yeah, I think, um, well, I think on a more broader level, I think the technology's, the, the technology's grown up, software as a service, capable of connecting um, with other point solutions and other platforms in order to deliver a more seamless experience ultimately to the end user. I, I think that is, I think that is happening. I think there's a lot of learning still to do um, to Laurie's point around creating um, the right experience, the right tone, the right environment for people to engage with and learn through. Um, but I think those are human constraints, actually. They're not technological constraints. It's about, it's about um, getting 
the offering and the user experience right. Um, but the technology unquestionably, I think, is in place in terms of being able to connect up with um, information sources, to connect up with other platforms that are able to um, create stronger and much more efficient ecosystems than have existed in the past. Sure. Laurie, oh, yeah. Look up. I oh, think. Seth, oh, go, go for it. Go for it. And I was going to say, look, it's 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 the question as to whether tech is ready has a simple answer, and it's yes. The question as to whether the industry is ready and and the industry is not too scared by technology to actually make it happen. That's where we need to try and push and educate the world of wine that technology exists, right? We did uh, a couple of weeks ago. We did a um, a, a YouTube live stream of a winemaker showing the cleaning of all the wineries, and you have people live asking, "Oh, what's that thing there in the background? Oh, how do you do this? Or oh, why do you use that machine?" Right? And, and that technology today is available to every single player in the industry, right? You want to do a YouTube stream, you want to do a Facebook live stream, you want to use technologies to reach people, that is available today, right? Uh, but to effectively get to a, a creative sort of a user experience to really engage with people in a way that is disconnected from the way we used to, wine is very traditional. Wine is very social. Wine is very experience-driven. experience, experience driven. Uh, So to be able to disconnect from the old ways and try and creatively come up with new ways is going to be absolutely essential for the next 12, 24, 36, look, make, make it five years, right? And we have seen over the last 12 months to, to confirm that we've seen within Trolley that... Uh, Look, we, we've seen a number of wineries basically just stopping to sell wine, right? A number of wineries just turned around and kind of went, look, if I can't actually have an avenue, I'll still make my wine, but I'll sell it at some of the time later on in the future. While we've also seen other wineries stepping on the Facebook, stepping on the Google advertising, stepping on the Instagram, on, on the YouTube influencer style approach. And these guys are recording record sales, Right. Um, so it is, it is definitely possible for the industry overall to adapt. The technology is there. The only impediment is really uh, know-how and, and also the drive to just, in Australia, we say, have a go. Just, just have a go. Just give it a try, right? Laurie, your last word for you. Oh, I would, you know, like following up on what Seb just said, um, I'm, I'm hopeful. Like the reality is, the, the people in the industry we are in right now, they are also living in the world of COVID. They are also exposed in buying their groceries, their meals, like their experience, like their own lives have been obviously impacted and changed. So exposure to like how other industries and services like, you know, manifest themselves in this like new times uh, is, is got to slowly but surely like rub and make it like more um, like obvious or comfortable. I think there's a lot of apprehension with technology when it comes to our industry. Um, and I'm really, so I'm, I'm really hopeful that way. I mean, even the amount of people that now is, you know, turn the camera on, on a Zoom call, thing like that like two years ago, a year and a half ago, that would have been, that would have required a lot, you know, to just even make that happen. Now it's, you know, um, we can still get tired of being, you know, on camera, but it's it's, it's not a big ask anymore. Not not as much as it used to be. Yeah. So, it may take longer because, you know, it, like the nature of the industry. But I, I'm, it has it has to to evolve because like those people they don't live in a, as much as in a bubble that sometimes we like to believe. And that's what I'm very yeah, actually the, hopeful. Yeah, I absolutely, I absolutely agree. I think we we have been going for a number of years now, and we've been working with wineries remotely in every wine region of the world. And and previous before COVID, we had a challenge with getting them to just jump online onto a video call. Now it's just natural. So the industry is definitely adapting. Uh, and just to put a slight caveat on, on the COVID point. Um, we have a lot of wineries that we're working with based out of Australia, who, if you have a look at numbers, Australia is probably the one country you want to be in right now with regards to COVID, right? Uh, they basically have very, very low cases. They are very aggressive to shutting down when something happens. Uh, and all this to say that 
while internally within the country, there's not as much of a COVID fear and COVID challenges, there are still restrictions on some amount of, of transport and, and, and tourism and outbound from the outside world in style wine tourism is also not happening. There's no more Asians coming in to, to visit. There's no more Europeans to come in and visit, um, which essentially means that technology is just as important, irrespective of whether COVID is, is, a, is a thing, right? Uh, and that's where ultimately, if we do lean on technology, the, the, the new generations want to buy convenience. The newer generations want to be able to say, yes, I've discovered that wine. Yes, I, I've, I've, it's been recommended to me. There's an AI that's told me to buy it. There's an influencer, a friend, someone told me about that wine. I'd like to get it. Just click a button. I'd like to get it. So technology is not going to go away, irrespective of um, whether COVID or not sort of a subside. I mean, it will. Well, Jonathan, Seb, Nick, and Laurie, thank you, Insiders, um, for episode two of the Wine Tech Insiders podcast. Um, you can find us on YouTube um, and iTunes and maybe some other services in the future as we roll all of this out. And of course, um, of course, it's sub subscriber only, super exclusive kind of content, right? Yes, very exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> You're very lucky to have listened to this and gone to the end. Thank you well again. Well done. Well um, done. Guys, we'll always nice to weeks. chat. <laughs> nice one. Cheers. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks. That was episode three of the Wine Tech Insiders podcast. We'll be back in a few weeks. Thanks again to Seb, Lori, Jonathan, and Nick. Um, we'll see you guys soon. Thanks for listening.